Our next guest has been busy in the mining space, and is it a time to get into the sector? We have a special guest joining us in Montreal today. Randy Smallwood, CEO of Silver Wheaton, is with me here in studio. Randy, good to have you back on the show. Always a pleasure to be in Montreal. Randy, we have so much to talk about today. We have your Q3 results. Profits lower from the same period, but production was up. Uh, we also have your $900 million uh, streaming deal with Glencore. So I want to talk a little bit about what people can expect from Silver Wheaton as we head into 2016. Well, we've, uh, as I mentioned, another record quarter. Um, we've got a number of investments we've made over the past few years that are that are now starting to bear fruit. We've got the Constancia mine coming on stream at full level. We've got Solobo coming on. So, so what we have is record production. I think it's the third quarter in a row we've had record production, and I see that continuing for the next couple of quarters as we, as these mines come on and start their contributions towards Silver Wheaton. So, a good, strong operating quarter. Commodity prices are down, hence the year-over-year -year performance. But uh, uh, we continue to grow our company. Well, you do have a da tax dispute hovering over uh, Silver Wheat, and how do you uh, uh, plan to, to meet that challenge? Well, we're working, uh, we received a notice of reassessment, and uh, we filed our, our, uh, our notices of objection. And so uh, what I can assure you is that we're working forward to resolve this. This, uh, this relates, we are taxable on mines within Canada, but the CRA has proposed to try and tax the mines that we get our silver and gold from outside of Canada. Uh, so we are cash taxable in Canada. We don't think that mines from outside of Canada should be tax taxable within Canada. The laws don't state or allow that. So, right. so we're working on that. So, Randy, you don't own or operate any of your, your mines, which definitely lowers your risk profile, but at the same time, it still makes your company very vulnerable to the price is of gold and silver. So how are you operating within this uh, really difficult price environment right now. We focus on the lowest half of the cost curve. And so 80% of our current production comes from assets in the first quartile of the respective cost curves. That means if we pull silver from a copper mine or gold from a copper mine, that copper mine, where does it fit on the copper cost curve? And by focusing on the lowest half of the cost curve and, and most of our assets being in the lowest quartile, those assets will operate through these low uh, commodity price periods. And so our assets are actually growing. Our assets, our partners are actually investing into them. And so all of our flagship assets are actually uh, expanding and, and growing operations over the next while, even in this low price period. Do you think 2016 will be a better year for silver prices? Uh, you know, the, the challenge we have is the, uh, the U.S. dollar and uh, the strength of the U.S. dollar. I, uh, I, I tend to think, uh, I almost feel like Charlie Brown and, uh, and, uh, and Miss Yellen is Lucy holding the football out. And here we go again. Uh, we're going to take a run at seeing if she's actually going to raise rates or not. And it just it continues to put pressure on precious metals. I, I'd, I'd like to just get it done, get it behind us so that we can actually start building. Um, but I just don't understand why the United States would ever want to have the strongest currency. It doesn't make sense in this in this ever-shrinking uh, ever world of international trade and such like this. A strong currency uh, doesn't do well. And, and so I think that precious metals will start moving once we start seeing some weakness, in, in relative weakness in U.S. dollar. Let's talk about your cash costs, almost half that of your competitors. Mm. That's 461 per ounce of silver equivalent. That's How right. do you manage to keep it at these levels? Well, we sign the contract so that it's fixed. I mean, it's the, it's the big advantage of the streaming model is that what we deliver to our shareholders is, is predictable costs. We, uh, we know that our costs are 461. I can predict that in, in 2019, our costs will be about $4.93. And so, you know, we've got uh, a fixed cost structure. We take that cost risk out from our shareholders. And when the price of silver goes up $5 an ounce, we get that $5 per ounce. We don't see the cost change as a result of the price change. Randy, I really want to talk to you about the state of mining, uh, especially as we head into the, into the new year. We saw the news yesterday, tech re resources cutting 1,000 jobs. It just seems mm -hmm. we keep getting uh, worse and worse news out of the mining industry. Uh, when's it going to turn around here? Well, it, it'll have to turn around because what we're not seeing right now is investment into the space, and yet we're depleting these resources and going forward. And so, so the, the world continues to consume minerals. It needs these minerals to go forward. And so it will eventually turn around. We know that. And, and I, you know, I, I just can't see it. When I sit and look at the base metal industry and the precious metals industry, most of the mining companies are treading water, perhaps almost drowning. And, uh, and so that's, that's going to provide us some support in terms of prices. I think we're at a bottom of this price cycle. Now it's just a matter of when it's going to start turning and start climbing. So do you think we'll see more mergers and acquisitions next year? 
Um, I think once we see some stability in pricing, I think uh, the healthier companies will start looking at the companies that are probably a bit more stretched. And so, you know, I do see some activity like that. So consolidation always helps in terms of burdens, and so it's, it's one, one form of cost saving is when you can actually consolidate and, mm -hmm. and get some optimization out of operations. So, so yeah, there's probably a pretty good chance. There's some good values out there right now. You also had another forecast for 2016. You'd see, you said we, we will see more streaming firms doing syndicated deals uh, right. next year. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. talk about this prediction? Well, and that really comes from the fact that, uh, as you mentioned at the start here, we uh, we just completed a deal with Glencore on the Antamina mine, $900 million, uh, for all of their silver, 100% of their silver from, from their share of the Antamina. And, uh, and that means I'm $900 million poorer than I was two weeks ago. And so uh, even, even us streaming companies are having capital limitations. The equity markets aren't there to support our own growth aspirations. And so, so it's now getting to the point where if we don't have the capital capacity inside, we may have to start looking at financial partners to do that. And that's where syndication may come in. Randy, I wish you the best of luck and thanks for stopping by. Always a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for watching this special edition of Kiko News back in Montreal. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.